great. Hallelujah, our sister Della is free. We'll now begin the um, funeral portion of our service this morning. I'd like to invite up Apostle Hamlet Barnes from Mustard Teeth Faith Church in Alabama to give the invocation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is a home celebration. Amen. Amen. It is a time to grieve, but yet it is a time to celebrate. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We know that our sister is no longer with us. The day she closed her eyes to leave this world, she entered into the heavenly realm with our Lord and our Savior Jesus. We're, we're celebrating today the land, the rest of the body of a soldier that is no longer fighting right now. I want you to go to the throne with me for a moment as we, we go before our Father thanking him. Father, I come to you today in the precious name of Jesus. I come to bless you, to praise you, to magnify your name. Father, you are good to us. You are better to us than we've been to ourselves. We thank you for, Lord, giving us the opportunity to, Lord, to get to know your daughter, sister, Ella, Lord. We thank you, Father, that we've been able to walk with her these many years, Lord, and, and Lord, to fight along beside her as she battled the enemy here on this earth. And Father, we thank you for the good times that we've had with her, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be able to know her, Lord, and knowing her to know you even better. Father, I thank you for this family right now as they grieve the passing of their loved one, Lord. Though she's not with us, Lord, here in the body, yet in Christ she's still here. And so, Father, I pray that you will comfort them right now during this most trying time of many of their lives, Lord. I pray, God, that you would uh, encourage them. I pray that you would assure them, Lord, that, God, that their loved one is in the hands of you, in your presence right now, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that they will be encouraged to, to, Lord, to run towards you just as she ran, Lord. To run for you just like she ran for you, Lord. I pray, Father, as they run, Lord, that you would be glorified. For their lights will be shining, Lord, giving you glory. I pray, Father, as Sister uh, Ella allowed many to see Jesus through her life. I pray that each one of us, Lord, not only family members, but each of us, Lord, will live a life that is victorious, that people that see us, Lord, they'll see Jesus in us just like they saw Jesus in her. We bless you now, Father, and we give you glory. We pray, Father, that you withdraw now those that, Lord, may not know you, that they too will come to know the Jesus that our dear sister knew, Lord, be with each now in a special way. And Father, we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the praise. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you, Lord. Amen and amen and amen. up um, this morning's praise team again as they lead us in the opening hymn. What a fellowship. What a joy to be.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'd like to invite up um, Brother Kelvin back up as he'll now give us lessons from the Holy Writ. He'll be reading from Psalm 23 um, in the Old Testament and the New Testament will be John 14, 1 to 6. So, Brother Kelvin, thank you. Bless you all. We've been reading six verses from the Old Testament, six verses from the New. Psalm 23 is often called a shepherd psalm. I like to refer to it as a sheep's psalm. I'll be reading, quoting from the King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we'll transition to the New Testament, John 14, verses 1 through 6. Jesus comforting the disciples as he's preparing to leave. May your hearts also be confident as you recall the words of our Lord. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there, you may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way we know. And like Thomas, we ask. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. The words of our Lord. Thank you, Brother Pitt. You know, in Psalm 23, the Lord uses what David is, a shepherd and a king, to tell us about who God is. My favorite part about that psalm has come at the end where David's warrior sneaks out. You know, I grew up in church and we say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. We think of God's love as like a shadow. But David was a warrior too. And that word for follow is the Hebrew word radaf. And what it means is, is I will chase you down until I'm captured. Ah. So when David says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, he's not saying God will be a little shadow. He's not saying God will just be there. Come he's on. saying the love of God is so powerful. You can't outrun it. The love of God is so big, you can't outrun it. The love of God is so real that it will chase all of us down until we're captured. So as we grieve and celebrate this morning, I am so grateful that our sister Della has been captured forever and is now in the Father's arms. Amen? Amen. I'd like to invite up Pastor Joshua Robertson from the Rock Church as we continue now with the prayer of comfort. I'm going to ask that everyone would stand except for the immediate family. And let's go before our God in prayer. 
O Lord, how wonderful and majestic is your name in all of the earth. You are our God, and beside you there is none other. And we submit to your will and your way. For, and Lord, in moments like these, we need your help submitting to you. We know that you are the only one and wise God, and we know that you do not make any mistakes. But in moments like this, Lord, our soul questions you and your authority and your will. Help us to stay in our place, but also help us to wrestle with these questions diligently and with truth. Remind us of the truth, and that is to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Help us, Lord, to grieve, but grieve as Christians. We do not grieve as those who are ignorant, for we know on the day that you sound the trumpet that the dead in Christ will rise and those who will remain will be caught up to meet you in the air together. The Apostle Paul encouraged the church in Thessalonica with these words, that we have a hope beyond the grave. And so, Lord, I pray that you would comfort this family with the hope that comes with being in you. For it is in you that we live and that we move and that we have our being. So, Lord, I pray that you would use the agency of family. Remind this family how important family is. Cause them to cancel their differences in a time like this in order to stay together, to cry together, to pray together, to smile together, to eat together, to fellowship together. Lord, cause us to be one, for that is your high priestly prayer. Lord, make us one. I pray that in this moment that you would comfort this family, that they would know that we are not excluded from life's low moments because of the gospel. We are given the guarantee that we don't have to do it alone. And so, Lord, help us to remember that, yes, we may be crying. Yes, we may be mourning. Yes, we may be grieving. But we are never alone. Lord, thank you for never being alone. Thank you. We pray these things in all prayers in Jesus' precious name. The only name that matters. The only name that works. Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 I'd like to call up um, our sister Lisa Vini again as she'll lead us in a musical offering at this time. Good afternoon. I'm just grateful to hear, be here this afternoon to celebrate. I called her finally Aunt Bella. And um, this was one of the songs that she requested. And as I was just meditating on the song, I feel like this is her heart's cry, that um, God's eyes on the sparrow, and he's not only looking over her, and she, I believe that she's with him in the spirit now, but he's still watching over us, amen? amen. Why should I feel discouraged? The shadows fall. Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? I see 
My condolences to you on the loss of your mother. I will keep you and your family in prayer. Love your friend, Shelly Branch. God is near in the loss of your mom. In every moment of every need, God is near. He sees and he cares. Not a single heartbeat or heart cry escapes his notice. May, he, may his infinite love and compassion give you peace to carry you through this time. Praying for you all. Love you. That's Sally and Jerome. Peace. I leave peace with you. May my peace, my peace I give to you. And this just says Jesus from the scripture. <laughs> For the Lord shall comfort, Isaiah 51 and 3, King James Version. Praying the Lord will comfort you with his peace, surround you with his love, encourage you with his presence. Love, death. <laughs> Thinking of you with sympathy. <clears throat> there are no words that can truly ease the pain of a loss like this. But if caring thoughts can help, they are with you right now. Love the Easter. There's a wonderful message from, Kat, from John and Kathleen, and it starts with, your loved one's legacy. A Christian leaves a legacy through their walk of faith that does more than point us back to a wonderful life remembered, it also points us forward in hope to an amazing celebration to come. Pray that God will give you comfort for your sorrows today, hope for what is yet to come, and assurance of his presence with you always. Love and sympathy, John and Kathleen. with you my peace I give pray that you will be surrounded by his comforting love and filled with his peace that only he can give with heartfelt sympathy to the family of Della Della will be missed it was always a joy to pray with her her faith was inspiring we will miss her greatly we were so thankful to know her and to have her as a part of our church family pray for you that you will know God's love, comforting presence at this time. Love Tim, Lynette, Isaac, Alina Johnson. And I believe that they go to HBIC. Thank the heart. The heart is never ready. No, it's not. <laughs> The heart is never ready. The time is never right to say goodbye. Thinking of you with deepest sympathies, hoping each new tomorrow will bring comfort and peace. Pastor Christian Robinson and First Lady Robinson at the Cross Church family, we are praying for you. And Della was a faithful member there for many years. The truest testament of a life well lived is memories we leave behind. Celebrating with you a life that touched so many, celebrating the memories that will remain. Bishop Glover. get two, two minutes to give your remarks, but because I was asked to read the announcement, I get to give mine now. So, with that said, 
I want to tell you some things that you don't know about Della. You think you know a lot, but there's some things you just don't know. Della was well-traveled, and she was my travel partner because she was my mission partner. And I just want to say, when we went to see the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, because we did many, many things together, took a cruise around New York, chaperone, you, all, anything that had to do with missions, Della was a part. Um, and she belonged to our agency, which is called Church and Community Empowering Enterprises, and she was our treasurer. But I knew Della since I was 20 years old, and she has been just a good friend to me over the years. We went to see, because this is hard for me, we went to see the stars. They show the stars on the ceiling. What's it called? I forgot the name. Planetarium. The planetarium. Went to the planetarium. And I looked over, and Della was snoring. <laughs> and I said, girl, they're paid to get up in here. What you doing? <laughs> Della was my friend. Church and Community Empowering Enterprises, a 501c3 organization from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. A resolution in loving memory of Sister Dale and Taylor. We now have mixed emotions in our hearts as we come to pay our respects to the memory of our loving sister, Della Taylor, who's absent from her earthly body, but present before the Lord, singing hallelujah. She has lived a Christ-centered life and is and now marching with the saints in heaven. Whereas we believe that the words recorded in the Holy Scripture offer us a blessed assurance, whereas we know that Sister Della Taylor believed and lived the word of God proffers that her proffers that her mansion in heaven was being built while she was on earth. And she is now resting in her, in, the, in her eternal home in heaven. Whereas Sister Taylor was known for her mission work, as she was all, as she always volunteered to perform the hard and needed labor of love that mission requires. Many of you might think that you met her in the older years, but if you know when she was young, she was quite a worker. She is always the first one to contribute toward mission projects stateside and abroad. Her ministry footprints are known in Chicago, Ohio, New York, India, Haiti, Kenya, just to name a few places. Whereas Sister Taylor has been a faithful, has served as a faithful treasure of church and community empowering enterprises, better known as C, since its inception. Therefore, be it resolved that we shall support and embrace Sister Taylor's family members by extending our love and expressing our words of encouragement toward them. To the family, we recognize that her loss to you is deep. Your sorrow is dire. But we want you to know that we empathize and share your sorrow. However, we do not sorrow as others that have no hope. We know that your loss on earth is heaven's gain. Humbly submitting the 16th day of September 2020 by the board members and CEO and executive director of Church and Community Empowering Enterprises. We shall miss you, Della. Our cherished treasurer and sister. Minister Elias D. Joseph, CEO, Evangelist Idatris Joseph, Executive Director, Evangelist Do Jocelyn Maddox, Secretary. And our member, our, another board member is represented here singing for Sister Della. Sister Doris. And Sister Doris Adams. Amen. Harrisburg Brethren in Christ. That's where you are, in case you don't know. <laughs> the Hasbro Brethren in Christ Church was privileged to have Della Taylor as one of our beloved members over the last number of years. We have a mixture of sadness over our loss and the loss of Della's family and the loss for Della's family. Thank you. And the loss for Della's family, excuse me. And deep joy to know that Della is with the Lord. 
rejoicing in his loving presence, fully healed. Our church extends sympathy and prayers to Della's daughters and the rest of her family. Della became a member of the Harrisburg Brethren of Christ Church in 2015, and she was actively involved before that time. Della served the church in many ways through these years. Della served as a deacon from 2016 to 2019. When she discontinued serving because of her health as a deacon, she faithfully prayed and encouraged and helped many of our church. She served as a member of one of the worship teams joyfully helping and leading the congregation and singing praise to God. She was active with our church's prayer ministry, always ready to pray for others. Whenever volunteers were asked for, Della was quick to serve, blessing many by her service, whether ushering for a funeral, serving food for a meal, or the like. Della was quick to share a word of encouragement with the people and praise God in the praises of God, even in the midst of her pain and suffering, Della also loved to quote scripture, and she encouraged many with God's truth. And just, at just the right time, Della's presence has been missed in our church for these last many months. Through our pastors and others, and in our church, we have been able to talk to her by phone. Her church member, her church family here at the Hasbro Brothers of Christ Church will fondly remember her and her faith-filled walk with the Lord. Our prayers are with her family. Our prayers for the family will continue with sympathy and joy. Pastor Hank, Pastor Woody, Pastor Linda, Pastor Patty, Pastor Carmen Donez, and Pastor Bree. May the Lord bless you. At this time, I'd like to invite up um, Della's grandson, Pernell Garrison. He says he's going to do a musical number, Pernell. Um, I wasn't expecting to do this. Um, I'm not saying, I don't need the microphone. I don't need the microphone. Um, no, no, that's it. I wasn't expecting to do this, but... Um, this is one of my grandmother's favorite songs. It was a ringtone. And uh, the last time I talked to my grandmother, she imparted some words of encouragement and wisdom to me that I'll never forget. She told me to run toward my blessings and not away from my blessings. Because I told her that I felt inadequate for the blessing that I had recently received. And I didn't know how to handle it. But she said, God meant for you to have it, so you take it and run with it. So every time I talked to her, I got encouragement. I got built up. She said, always had the right thing to say to me at the right time. So I think about this song. I never would have made it. I never could have made it without you. Can y'all hear me in the back? Oh, yeah. I would have lost it all. But now I see how you were there for me. And I can say, I never would have made it. I never could have made it without you. I would have lost it all. But now I see how you were there for me. And I can't say I'm stronger. I'm wiser. I'm better. So much better. When I look back, out of all you brought me through, I can see that you were the one I held on to. No, I never, never no, I never could have made it. Never made it without you. I 
in my test because you were there to carry me through my mess. I'm stronger. Amen. That's all I wanted to say to you. I appreciate all the work and wisdom you ever gave. Thank you, Mary. Um, as alluded to, we're going to give some time here in the service for some reflections. If you have a program, it says two minutes. I'd like to remind you up to two minutes. Um, we'd like to hear from as many different people as possible. Um, I'm going to try to hold the microphone because of COVID and because we want to keep it moving. So um, we'd like to invite you to come up and share. We are live streaming for people who aren't able to be here. So we'd like to stand on this side of the casket because that's where my, the camera is. Um, but we just say up to two minutes to share just memories. Um, or things that you're going to hold on to um, about Sister Della or maybe lessons she taught you. So I'm going to go down there and invite whoever wants to come up to please come up. And please introduce yourself too when you come up. So we know who you are. Um, hello, my name is Calvin Morris. Um, I'm Della Cousin, um, late cousin. And um, I had the honor and the privilege to live with my cousin. I was young, I was 21, I'm 37 now. Um, and I came to Pennsylvania to get my license because you could come up here, you could just get the permit and get your license. And so, I moved with my cousin, I was getting ready to leave, and she gave me a place to stay. She fed me. She um she prayed for me. And she taught me what it was like to love in every moment. Love was always the greatest thing she ever preached. She was a giver. She was fearless. And she'd be truly missed because she taught me how to be a prayer warrior along with all the prayer warriors that I come from. And I come from a long line. And so I'll carry a piece of forever with me because this is where my journey started, where her is now coming to end. And so I ask all of you, don't let this be the last time you tell someone you love them. You hear me? I love you, Cousin Della, but you know what? I'm not sad, and I promise you that because you knew that. Because every chance I got, I was there. And every chance I get, I'll continue to be there, and I actually do the same. And so I love you with all my heart and all of my existence. And for you, I'll continue to live. Thank you all, and I love you all. Hello, my name is Kim Nicolette Snell, and I have known Della for several years. We just crossed paths throughout life. I know. We, I went to Emmanuel Church, she was going to Bishop Feeney, and I know our two churches used to um, fellowship together, so I knew Della through that. And then when we, when I came here to HBIC, I saw her, I gave up even before then, back, I mean, Della and I, we were always on these, like, try to make money schemes. We were on <laughs> I-team together, you know, I said, come on, Della, we can get rich here. <laughs> And then we did Mana V together. So it was through those types of business transactions and interactions that I knew Della. And I knew that she was always big on health, you know, that she wanted to do things that was really good for her health. And the last time I was at her home in High Spire, you know, we were talking and she said, uh, you know, we were praying. She was saying, you know, Kim, she says, I do not really want to. Believe, Lord, that the Lord that's going to give me, you know, use this, whatever she was using to get well. And, um, but she also said, you know, we were talking, she says, but you know what? She says, if the Lord doesn't heal me, she says, it's not that he can't heal me. It's just not in his will. And she says that I am fine, whatever the Lord, whatever his will is for me. And that's what Della 
That's what I remember about Della. She loved the Lord. She was a prayer warrior. We would go in that room and she would cry out to the Lord. She prayed for her family, her grandchildren, her sisters, her brother. She was a praying woman and she loved the Lord and she loved to praise God. And she would tell me, she said, you know, she says, I just need to get some release. I just need to be able to just open up and praise and magnify God. And that's what Della will want us to do today. She will want us to be shouting the praises of God because she was a praiser. She worshiped God and she loved God. And I'm going to truly miss Della because she was an encouragement to me. We would talk about the Lord, but I know that, you know, she is with the Lord right now and resting and she's not feeling any pain and she just would want her family just to know and love the God that she praised and worshiped. We said testimony of my professional, but we doing all right. <laughs> Good afternoon. I just wanted to um, just share some um, fond memories of Ms. Dell on behalf of the Easter family. Um, all of our love to the family. Um, she's been in my life. I met a cousin today, Eugene, or yeah, and he said the day I came from the hospital, I was at Miss Della's house. So my mama just had me and everything, and she was staying with Miss Della. And um, she's always just been um, a shining Christian in my life growing up. And uh, last year at this time, it was just a beautiful time that we shared together with the family. Um, her nephew got married in Tennessee, and we went out, we got massages. Um, we went to a salt cave where we all just sat in a room and just um, shared that time with each other. She just really enjoyed that. Family was everything to her. And she was one of those people in my life that whenever I would see her, she just had this natural glow. I've never met somebody yeah. like that. She just eluded Christ all the time. She was a true prayer warrior and a true example of Christ-likeness to all of us. And I just thank the Lord that I had the opportunity to check on her. I would call her and I would thank her. You know, she's poured into each and every one of us. But for once, the Lord gave me an opportunity to pour into her. And I would pray with her, and I would thank her for being that shiny example. And she would always cry on the phone and just say, thank you. And I was like, no, thank you. You've been there for all of us. It's our time to pour into you. You set the example. Now it's up to us to follow that legacy and be Christ-like. Thank you. my cousin Mika for always being there for my grandma and expressing her love. Uh, when we were sitting in the hospital and she was sick, um, I just want to read y'all what she, what I wrote down as far as I can remember what she said. Oh. Let me get to it real quick. So I don't know where we sitting there talking to her and she says, y'all, when I die, don't get too bent out of shape. Don't be too overly sad and depressed. I want you to live your life and be happy and stick together. She says, stop all that fussing and arguing. It's crazy. <laughs> I love my family. I love you all, not one more than the other. And that, that, was, that, was, that was it, you know. But uh, that was my grandma and she was a loving woman. Um, I don't, it, it, it's going to be hard to live without her, <laughs> uh, but she was a loving woman. So I'm going to sing this song. Um, Although we've come to the end of the road, still I can't let go. It's unnatural. I belong to you. You belong to me, come to the end of the road, still I can't let go, it's not natural. 
like that was just such a beautiful, beautiful moment. And it's a moment that we can all continue to hold on to. I just wanted to say. My name is Alan Carr. We had the privilege of having Della in our Sunday school class. And she was always a tremendous blessing. And one of the things that was really exciting was when I'd hear her pray, she could touch heaven. And it's just, so it's going to be a tremendous. It'll be a tremendous loss in our class. Thank you all for coming up and share. Just like to thank you all for coming up and share. Um, I want to call up my uh, sister Lisa Vini again and do another musical offering. And then following that, Sister Idatris will read the obituary.
obituary, Della M. Coney Taylor was born Saturday, December the 22nd, 1945 in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, to the union of the late William P. Coney, Sr. and the late Osceola. Osceola Banks. <laughs> She received her formal education in Harrisburg, in the Harrisburg School District, and was a graduate of the former John Harris High School, known as Harrisburg as Harris High. Della married the late A. Taylor, and their union was blessed with two daughters. During her working career, she was a former employee of the American Red Cross, the Harrisburg Hospital, and lastly the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, where she retired in 2006. In 1982, Della joined the Fellowship of Gospel Tabernacle under the auspice of Bishop Paul T. Beanie, who will be gracing us today. In the same year, she gave her life to Christ, having accepted the Lord as her personal savior and having a desire to study the word of God she attended and graduated from Gary Whetstone School of Bible Studies, a biblical Bible, a biblical studies, excuse me. She committed to serving the Lord, and while working at PennDOT, she taught a Bible study class until she became ill. Long after her retirement, she kept teaching that class. During her Christian journey, she served at Christ Community Church in Camp Hill on the National Prayer Hotline, served at Abundant Life Community Church on the Finance Committee. While a member of At the Cross Church of God in Christ, she served as a choir member, usher, and on the Pastor Day Committee. She also served at True Worshiper Ministries on their praise team, and presently, Della was a member of the Harrisburg Brethren in Christ Church. Della was a great cook. One of her specialties was seafood pasta salad. Amen. Y'all done had it. Y'all know y'all had it. <laughs> Not to mention all the delicacies that she could prepare. <coughs> she loved to prepare meals for her family and friends. Della loved to sing. And she would often sing duets with her sister, Ella. She loved her family and friends and always readily available to support them at any occasion. On Friday, September the 11th, 2020, in the peace of her love, in the peace and love of her home in High Spire, Pennsylvania, Della M. Pony Taylor, at age 74 in eight months and 20 days, transitioned into eternal life. She leaves to celebrate her life and legacy, her daughters Carmen Taylor, Garrison and Deidre Taylor McNair, Daryl, her brother, William P. Coney Jr., her sister, Mother Ella Bird, her devoted friend and confidant, Donald Taylor, her five grandchildren, her six great grandchildren, and a host of other relatives and friends. Della was a mother, a grandmother sister, cousin, confident, and friend to many people who dearly loved her. We will truly miss her physical presence in our lives, lovingly submitted by her family. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite up um, Della's sister, Mother Ella Bird, who will do a musical offering. Um, and then following this musical offering, I'll introduce Bishop Paul T. Beanie for the eulogy. Praise the Lord, everybody. First, giving honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is my life. The only wise God, too wise, to ever make a mistake. I'm going to miss my sister. But one thing about it, I know where she is. 
She and I talked and talked till we talked out. But I told her, I'll see you again, sis. Don't cry. I just want to sing the words of a song. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow grass and he leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing hand and he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm saved. That's why she's saved. That's why I'm saved. Saved in his arms. Because the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow grass. And he leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing health. And he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm saved. <coughs> That's why she's saved. That's why we're saved. Saved in His arms. When the storm, when the storm, when the storm of life of life. such a blessing to, to not only, you know, pass through someone, but to walk with them for not years, but decades. Um, Bishop Vini has known the family and known Sister Della for decades. So we're really excited to amen. have him come and uh, be the eulogist this afternoon. Yes, amen. I'm taking off my mask. 
Y'all keep yours on, please. <laughs> the reason that I am doing that is because I want you to be safe, but more than that, I want those who are under the sound of my voice to be saved. Something touched me recently. I heard one of the grandsons say even today that it is very, very important As my, um, as my daughter, um, alias, my boss. <laughs> I love her dearly. And she loves me. And we want families in our community to love each other. Yeah. Y'all didn't hear that, did you? Yeah. You mind if I stand here? Yes, sir. You mind if I stand here? Yes, Speak! Well, I got the mic, so I'm gonna stand here. Amen. <laughs> but more than that, a scripture that I want you to look at. I pray you have either the Bible in your hand or in your heart. In the fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians, there are 10 verses. Now don't, don't leave, because I'm not going to preach on 10 verses. <laughs> I was trained as a 14-year-old preacher. They taught us three-point preaching. Say it with me, three points. Three, three points. points. We want to read these verses and then the verse that I want to highlight today is verse 8. My opportunity is to greet this family. My not just my condolences, but my greeting to you is that you proceed in the strength of the Lord. Now, if you don't get with me, I got a two hour sermon. <laughs> but if you get with me, we can shorten it. Uh, now, please help me. I'm a, I have the opportunity of a lifetime. Can I tell you this little story? My good uh, friend, my brother in the ministry, he got saved in this city, and he now pastors in Alabama at a wonderful church there. He's the father of the church that makes me the grandfather. I want to read these verses 
And I pray that you will listen attentively. Brother Barnes, can you proceed? Praise the Lord. I have been asked to read first from the King James and then second from the Passionate Bible. Passion Bible, so the first ten verses of the King James. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, honestly, desiring to be closed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so, be that being closed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothes upon the mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that has wrought us for the self same thing is God, who also has given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while as we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Mm. The King James. Now I'm reading from the Passion Translation. We are com convinced that even if these bodies we live in are folded up at death like tents, we will still have a God-built home that no human hands have built, which will last forever in the heavenly realm. We inwardly sign as we live in these physical tents longing to put on a new body for our life in the heaven. In the belief that once we put on our new clothing, we won't find ourselves naked. So while living in this tent, we groan under its burdens not because we want to die, but because we want these new bodies. We crave for all that is mortal to be swallowed up by eternal life. And this is no empty hope, for God himself is the one who has prepared us for this wonderful destiny. And to confirm this promise, he has given us the Holy Spirit like an engagement ring as a guarantee. That's why we are always full of courage, even while we're at home in the body. We are homesick to be with the master, for we live by faith, not by what we see with our eyes. We live with a joyful confidence, yet at the same time, we take delight in the thought of leaving our bodies behind to be at home with the Lord. So whether we live or die, we make it our life's passion to live our lives
pleasing him. For one day, we will all be openly revealed before Christ on his throne so that each of us will be duly recompensed for our actions done in life, whether good or worthlessness. The reading of the word of God. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I want to share with you this 8th verse. To be absent to be absent I'll say it again. It is absolutely challenging and vital. What made me excited about this opportunity, not because of the passing of this precious sister, but the opportunity to share with you who are here today a special day for you to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus commanded us as believers, as preachers, teachers, singers, testifiers, those who have been called by his name to proclaim the truth. Amen. It's only the truth that's going to set you free. Amen. Amen. And ironically, I want to conclude this two hour message. <laughs> with these words and I want you to repeat them and if you repeat them, repeat them loud enough say it with me I am a spirit I am a spirit I have a soul I have a soul and I live in a body and I live in a body Members of this family, members. <laughs> members who knew this family, those who have come to encourage this family, you need to know this, to be absent from the body. For the believer is to be present with the Lord. Say so. Hallelujah. Yeah. We've heard all the wonderful things about our dear sister. She's gone to be with the Lord. My charge, my responsibility is to say to those who haven't gone that far yet that you are a spirit. You live in a, you have a soul which is your mind, 
your will, and your emotions. And far too often, we go to church and we participate. We clap our hands, we stomp our feet, we sing songs. But my question to you is, do you know Jesus? Amen. Say, so, well, this is not the right time. The right time. This could be the greatest opportunity in your living life. Come on. There's a teeth. To hear the gospel. Jesus did not die. For naught, he died because his death gave us the opportunity to have life. The scripture says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Listen, there's nothing stopping you from giving your heart to Jesus. The late Billy Sunday, who preceded Billy Graham, he made this statement. He said, going to church don't make you a Christian any more than going to a garage makes you a car. Come on now, say so. I'm telling you, your body is just your house. One of these days, sooner or later, I'm not here to scare you. I'm here to tell you the truth, if the truth be told. Only what you do for Christ is going to last. Amen. If you're not born again, you're missing a golden opportunity to live. Yeah. I found out a long time ago that if you're not born again, you're just existing. Mm -hmm. You're not living. Living is more than breathing. Living is more than just clapping your hands, stomping your feet. Living is being in Christ. Yes. I don't care what religion you have. Religion won't save you. I said, religion won't save you. Amen. But if you bow your head, open your heart, and say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Oh, I'm successful with all the things that I've done. That's human effort. But Jesus didn't die for you to ignore him. He died for you to receive him in the pardon of your sins. For all have sinned and 
come short of the glory of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. And if you confess with your mouth, yes. I'll say it again. Yes, sir. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Yes. And believe in your heart. You believe it. That's what it's going to take. Yes, sir. I said you got to believe it. Yes. I'm not talking about do, do you believe in the preacher? But do you believe his message? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's right. Getting a little weary. Getting a little despondent over being locked down in my room. We haven't had church like we have it now. This virus is treacherous. It's disgust, disgusting, depressing. And Jesus said, Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. And it didn't just mean it for a few. He meant it for all. Yeah. It is my prayer that we honor this precious sister. Wouldn't this be wonderful to know that we came for this occasion and it turned out to be a great outpour of God's Spirit. Yes. Yes. Lord, absolutely. Come, Lord Jesus. Yes. Oh, I want to say it again. We need a revival. Yes. We get sick and tired of just going through the motion on Sunday mm -hmm. and having come motion <laughs> the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. yes, Father, Son, Revival, mm -hmm. Son, Healing, yes. bless us and make us a blessing. Yes. I say, bless us yeah. and make us yeah. a blessing. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me, please. I'm just about through. Um, you mind if I sit down? Father, I thank you. Yes. Much has been said about the noble lifestyle and influence that our dear sister had. A lot of flowery words, commendable comments, but God, I came with a message in my heart. I pray that not one man or woman, boy or girl, leave this place 
without an absolute surrender of their lives to you. I pray it. I said I pray it. That the Holy Spirit will have his way across the gathering of these precious people. Yeah. He didn't die just so Hollywood could make movies. Yeah. He didn't die just for you. He died for you to do what he wants you to do. He wants you to say, Lord Jesus, I want everybody joining with me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I came today. I came today. This sister has produced in us a urging. We would have never come to this place had it not been for Sister Della. Yeah. Yes. Wouldn't it be sad for her to have already arrived in heaven and you miss it because you were like the cross of God. When Jesus came, you said to him, keep moving. But it is my prayer. Stretch your hands out, point it up this way. I pray for you. I pray that the Holy Spirit will bring conviction, that He will bring a sense of need for salvation. I pray, Lord that you touch us at the point of our need. Bless us and make us a blessing. Thank you for this family, for these precious daughters. Thank you for the grandchildren. Thank you for all the guests and all the visitors. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, no one can make you be saved. That is an act of your will. All you need to do, if you want to be saved today, all you need to do is say these few words. I'm going to give you some words to say. And if you say it from the heart, the Bible says that you are saved. Say it with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, I acknowledge, acknowledge my, need my need for Savior. For Savior. Come into my life. Come into my life. Take charge of my life. Take charge of my life. Do what only you can do. Do what only you can do. Because you are the Lord of my life. Of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And say it again with me. I receive it. I receive it. I believe it. I believe it. I confess it. I confess it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Bishop Vini. I'd like to um, invite the team at Winfield to get ready um, as we prepare for the recessional. Um,
Brother Joshua, I don't know if you could play something for us real quick as we get ready to go out. Um, you know, outside of scripture, I love quotes, but I love to butcher them even more. And there's a quote by Maya Angelou that says, you may not remember everything that someone does, you may not remember everything someone says, but you will always remember how they made you feel. As I think about Sister Della, I, I think about how much I will miss her. You know, I used to love her to say, Pastor Hank, how you doing, baby? And I was like, you know, I'm 37 years old, but you just feel like my mom right now, so I'm doing good, you know? And she always reminded me I'm only good because God is good. And she would ask about my mom, my babies, how they doing? I was thinking about this service this afternoon as we've celebrated, we've talked about, we've celebrated through music, and we see that she not only has a musical family, but she had a love for music. And I think about how much I loved watching her worship the Lord, just seeing her worship the Lord. And what a joy and a blessing to know that right now she's worshiping the Lord in person. Amen? Amen. I thought about the love that many people shared that they felt through her or felt in her or that God's love they received through how she lived. And I'm challenged, and I hope we're all challenged, to live that same way. That the love that God poured through her may be that same love we ask God to pour through us as we can pour through one another. But lastly, we celebrated her faith. And as the bishop so eloquently said, you know, it's, it'd be a shame if we gathered here today. If we all gathered here today, and we all left not knowing Jesus Christ. So that's our prayer for you as well. I just want to close us now in prayer, and then we'll have our recessional. So God, we just thank you for our sister Della's life. We thank you for her witness, her testimony. We thank you for the way she made all of us feel. We thank you for the music you put in her spirit, and that now she gets to worship in heaven forever with you. Lord, we thank you for the love you put in our heart. Let it be a reminder to us of the love that you've gifted all of us. But Lord, we thank you for that faithful witness, that testimony. And we pray that as we think of her, help us not only remember how she made us feel, but who she introduced us to, or who she reminded us of, or who she pointed us to. You. And that's you, Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you, and we thank you so much that now our sister gets to rest with you in eternity forever. Lord, help us to leave today with that same knowledge that knowing you changes our destiny and our future. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you all.